not started very wide, but uh, it's hit the crack and gone even further astray after it's pitched. Again full and again flicked away on the leg side. Hello, hello. My goodness. Lily really did ask for that, and that's really very silly. Javid Meandad, hello. My goodness. Well, this is absolutely disgraceful. It really is absolutely stupid. I cannot understand. Lily actually asked for that. He encroached upon Javid Meandad's line, and we very nearly had ourselves a fight on the ground. I really think that uh, that's very silly. And I think that Greg Chappell is actually having a pretty harsh word there with... Uh, with Dennis Lilly. I sincerely hope so, because that was a terrible thing to see on the cricket field. It really is taking antagonism far too far. And we're glad to see uh, Greg Chappell come into that. And as you can see, he was there aiming a kick at uh, Javid Meandad and uh, Meandad aiming to hit Lily with a bat. And umpire crafter here doing a very good job. That was the second part of that incident. Uh, in fact, I would suggest that it was started by Lily on this occasion. Lily gets his hands up and, in fact, moves backwards now to get into Javid Meandad's way, I think. Javid Meandad prepared to go around him. Lily moving across into his way. Now, remember, Javid Meandad's out of his crease there. Lily sticking the shoulder into Meandad and of course Meandad pushing him because he's got to get into the into the batting crease. And Meandad has a hit at that one and it's gone down to deep mid wicket. And so that's how that little incident started and uh, there's no doubt in my opinion that it was started by Lily. And it really was a nasty one. Yes, I'd be very interested to know what the exchange of words were out there before Lily did move into Meandad's path. Very difficult to judge from this distance. Well, I don't know that uh, I've ever heard of a, an actual fight taking place on the career ground, but this is about as close as one has ever come to it. Lily moving across, putting his shoulder into Javid Meandad's chest. Meandad has to try and go for his crease because if he doesn't, he could be run out. Lily then turns around and uh, points towards the umpire as if to say, Stani manager with a cigarette in his hand. He's got big enough problems without having incidents to worry about. His team is about to get slaughtered. But uh, they, they are very seriously, obviously, discussing, discussing the incident. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if we heard a rumor or something of that sort suggesting that the Pakistanis might be going home. I quite often hear those sort of rumors when incidents like this uh, take place. That's a fine shot by Roger. Beautifully placed down the ground. As we see it, now veering slightly away from the Australian fast bowler. And as I see it, just a little verbal coming into the thing there. And Lily reacts by coming across towards the Pakistan captain. Now it's at that point with Javed pushing out the bat, that uh, the Australian players who sat in judgment on this thing say that uh, Javed shoved the bat at Dennis Lilly. That's their version of it. The umpire now comes in. Very quick work by Tony Crafter to get in there. And uh, then we had the two unsavoury things that I hope never to see repeated on a cricket field. Perhaps Tony Crafter would have been better off uh, not to be there. Might have brought it all to his very speedy halt. So that's um, the way it happened on our screens. That's uh, one of the replays we have. We have others, but uh, that basically is what happened. Uh, you saw it yesterday, you saw it last night. We've shown you again this morning, and we now give you the Pakistan captain, Javed Meandad. Well, Dennis Lilly, what uh, started it all? Actually, you know, when I played ball on leg side, I was just looking dead and I was taking singles. And when I was going to other ends, and uh, obviously, Lily, he stopped me, you know, and he was abusing me. And obviously, when I saw ball went to Gordy Marsh, and, and he was trying to hit other end, and I obviously I push him. And after that, he kicked me, and 
I think then after that, umpires come between us and he start you know, abusing me and using dirty words to me. And obviously he upset me after that. Three o'clock on the 16th of November 1981. That's um, a time and an incident that will live long in the memories of those associated with Australian cricket. I uh, haven't seen anything quite like that uh, on the field. I've seen a few such little incidents over the years. Uh, one was uh, John Snow at Lords when uh, he barreled Sunil Gavaskar. The Indian captain was suspended for one match for so doing. Uh, that was uh, in the Indian second innings of that Lords test match where Gavaskar finished up making 53 and India saved the match. They needed something like 30 odd on the last day to win with two wickets in hand and uh, it was uh, a game that was washed out on the final day so it was all inconclusive and by an ironic twist John Snow in that uh, match to that date made his highest first class score. He top scored for England with 73. He was out of the next test match a suspension but he came back in for the one after. It didn't actually affect his career because he remained a uh, top class bowler with uh, England for quite a few years to come. So Javed Miandad, the Pakistan captain, has uh, given his version of the incident out there, the one that uh, you've seen. Have there been a bit of exchange of words before that? Uh, me and Dad uh, me and Dad had sort of uh, a couple of times uh, uh, said a few things. I'd said a few things. We'd both, both uh, exchanged um, pleasantries or whatever. But, uh, yeah, it had been going on for some time. I think it's probably been going on uh, for a few years as well. So uh, it's nothing new. But, uh, yeah, it's nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, some chipping going on. What about the kick? Do you regret that? I think I believe uh, in an eye for an eye. Um, I've always believed that. I think uh, if you've, if someone started something, I believe that you're within your rights to uh, to do something. I don't think uh, it was probably the right thing to do. Uh, but uh, also bearing in mind that he was bearing down on me with a bat too at one stage. So obviously he was fairly keen to... Uh, I don't think he probably mentioned that in his interview, but uh, he was obviously fairly keen to uh, to do something himself. So. You know, I think uh, you've got to look at both sides, and uh, I don't feel, to be honest, that there would have been any incident at all if he hadn't charged into me. So I lay the blame completely on his shoulders. You've got a slight uh, divergence of opinion there. They don't uh, seem to be as one on exactly what happened. And as I say, you can have a look at the replays uh, in your home living room and uh, continue to make up your own minds. We also talked this morning with the Australian team manager, John Edwards. John Edwards, the Australian players have had a very good look at the, the Channel 9 replay of the incident. What was their version after looking at it? Well, after looking seven or eight times, Ian, at the, uh, the slow-mo replays in particular, they came to the decision, uh, most of them who hadn't been close to the incident, that Dennis did have some cause for a type of retaliatory action. At the same time, not condoning his action in any shape or form. They made that perfectly clear. But the reason that their fine was of $200, $200, which seems pretty light on the face of the, uh, what happened, uh, was so low, was because they thought that the first actual physical contact was made by Jarvid. And that's after watching the slow-mo several times in that room, just one after the other. So probably something no one in Australia has had a chance to do so, uh, see so many in such a short time of it. So they they think, in their own opinion, that Jarvid's action was uh, was on purpose. That he attempted that he hit Lily on purpose. Oh, by all means, they they think that he shoved him pretty forcibly, uh, which shows up pretty well in that. Uh, that had he not done that, that may, nothing else may have followed. And this is part of their reasoning in doing it. They're also a bit disturbed too that Dennis, of course, is uh, the big bad man, which he has been for 
painted in several years, or you've been with him longer than I have, but in three years of managing sides, I've got on famously. It's a pleasure to work with Dennis. Although, you know, his aluminium bat thing gave us a bit of a stir up. He's that sort of fella. He's a volatile fellow. But by the same token, Jarvett's not exactly the whitehead boy around the place. And we go back to that Rodney Hogg incident in the Melbourne cricket ground when he ran him out while he was patting the wicket down. That didn't go over very well with Melbourne crowds. And the boys have found him a bit irritating on the field over the years. So he's not just the white-haired boy that he's sort of being painted as the big hero at the moment. But I, that's not... Uh, I'm, I'm not sort of trying a uh, uh, mudslinging match there. But And by the same token, again, I point out that Dennis and Lily's action was certainly not condoned in any way by any members of the team. I think the major criticism they're coming under now is that the fine of 200 was too low. This seems to be the sense of opinion, uh, but it was unanimous. With that in mind, are you expecting any more from the board on the incident? I've heard nothing conclusive about that. No board member has mentioned that to me, although I did late last night see Phil Ridings and Lenny Maddox, and I've seen Bert Rigg this morning, and uh, I've asked John Rogers, the secretary of the WACA here, to let me know if any further action's being taken. I, but I'd really just be...